Hi everybody. In this video we're going to learn how to use AmmoJS and 3JS to build this scene. So the first thing we'll need is AmmoJS. So let's Google AmmoJS GitHub and it says Kripken AmmoJS at GitHub. That's the one I want. And let's go into the builds folder and there's three items here. I'm going to take AmmoJS. Click on download. Here it is here. So I'm going to right click and save as and it's a JavaScript file, so I'm just going to save it to my device. Now I'm going to load it into my code editor. So I'm just going to drag and drop it into my modules folder. And in my modules folder, I also have 3.module.js. And I have an index.html file. That's where all the code will be. And my style sheet, my style.css, I just have margin is 0 and height is 100%. Okay, so in the head section of my HTML file, I am going to load my AmmoJS. And then in the body section of my HTML file is where the JavaScript will begin. So I have script type is equal to module, and I'm loading 3.module.js. So let's look at how it works first before we get into the code. So I have a block that falls from the sky, and it falls on top of this row or grid of blocks. And I can shoot a projectile wherever my mouse is located. So I'm using ray casting to shoot the ball from the mouse position. So I have to create the ground cube, I have to create the cube that falls, and I have to create this grid of cubes, and I have to use ray casting to make a ball at the mouse position and then sh give it a velocity to shoot the ball. So let's look at the declare variable section. So for AmmoJS, I need to declare my physics world. And then I'm creating an array, and this array will be a list of rigid bodies that we create in the physics world. So I'm calling it rigid body underscore list. But we have to keep track of all the rigid bodies that we make and put into the physics world. And then I'm creating a variable TMP transformation. This will just temporarily store the transformation to be applied to each object in the animation loop. And in my 3JS variables, I'm just declaring my clock, scene, camera, and render. And then I'm declaring my raycaster. And then temp pause. This will store the raycaster vector. And then my mouse chords variable. That will be the normalized mouse coordinates that we use in raycasting. Okay, so there's our variable section. Okay, now we have this uh, start function. So I have ammo bracket bracket then start so it will run this start function this is just initializing AmmoJS you could think of this as like the p5 setup function this function will run once and that's it and I'm using this function to set up everything in this world TMP transformation this will store transformation to be applied to objects so every the, any changes that happens in the world this transformation will be applied to them. And then I'm going to initialize the physics world. So this will be the AmmoJS setup. And then I'm going to initialize the graphics world. That will be the 3JS setup. And then, then we're going to create things in our world. So we're going to create the ground. That will be the ground cube. Then we're going to create the grid of cubes that we're going to shoot at. And then we're going to create the drop cube, the cube that falls from the sky and lands on the uh, grid of cubes. And then we're going to add event handlers. So that there's going to be two event handlers, the mouse down. So when I click the mouse, uh, the ray casting will start. And the window resize event handler, which will handle window resize events. And then we're going to call the render loop. And that will render or animate objects in our world. There is our AmmoJS initialization. OK, so the first function we're calling is the init physics world. So this will set up our physics world in AmmoJS. And this is all we're going to need. We're going to need a collision configuration. Next, we're going to declare the dispatcher. So this goes over each pair of potentially colliding objects and then calls the collision algorithm for each specific configuration, whether it's a box on a sphere or a sphere versus a sphere. It will sort these out. And it will return the time of impact, the closest points on each object, and the amount of penetration depth and distance. Okay, so that's what Dispatcher does. And then we're going to recruit the broad phase. So broad phase goes through all the objects and makes a list of potentially colliding pairs and eliminates um, the rest. And lastly will be our solver. This just causes objects to interact uh, properly. Okay, then we're going to pass all these things into our physics world. The collision configuration, the dispatcher, the broad phase, and the solver. So physics world is equal to new ammo.pt 
discrete dynamics world and then we're passing these four things dispatcher overlapping pair cache solver and collision configuration and then I'm just setting the gravity of that world according to this vector so that's how you set gravity in your physics world so we have our collision detection set up okay so now we need to initialize the graphics world so we have to set up 3JS so I'm just setting up a clock to keep track of time I'm adding a scene and background color I'm adding the camera and where the camera will be and where it will look at and then I'm setting up a hemisphere light and I'm setting up a renderer and then I'm setting the output encoding to 3sRGB encoding it's just a basic 3JS setup clock scene camera light render that's it we have our MOJS setup we have our 3JS setup now we need to add objects so each time I call a cube we're going to run this create cube function. When I call this function, we're going to give it the scale, position, mass, color, and quaternion. So the first object we're creating is the ground. I'm calling the create ground function. So let's see where that is here. So here's our create ground function. I'm calling the create cube function. I'm passing in the scale. So the scale will be a vector along the x, y, and z axes. And I'm passing in a position that will also be a vector with the x, y, and z coordinates. And you're passing in a mass, you're passing in a color as a hex value, and you're passing in the quaternion, which tells you the rotation of the object. So every time we call a cube, we're passing in the scale, the position, the mass, the color, and the quaternion. And the create cube function is going to use that information to create the cube. So for the 3JS side, where it's the same thing, we're using a geometry and a material to form a mesh. So for the geometry, we're using the scale X, scale Y, scale Z. For the material, we're using the color that we passed in. For the position, we're using the position X, Y, and Z that we passed in. And then we're taking this and adding it to the scene. For AMOJS, it's a little bit more complicated. We basically have to tell AMOJS what the position and rotation is for that object. We have to tell it the collision geometry and tell it the initial inertia and then use all that information to build the rigid body and then put that rigid body into the physics world. First thing is to let transform is equal to new ammo.bt transform. So we're setting the position and rotation of that rigid body. And then transform.set identity. This function will reset any existing transforms. So we can just give it the starting position and rotation. And that's what we'll do here. Transform.set origin. This will be a vector, and this will use the position that we passed in. Position.x, position.y, position.z. That will be the starting position. And then we're going to set the rotation, transform.site rotation, and we're using the quaternion values that we passed in. So quaternion x, quaternion y, quaternion z, and then quaternion w. That will give it the starting rotation. And then we're going to pass those things into the default motion state. The default motion state is what AMOJS uses to manipulate the shapes. So let default motion state is equal to new ammo.bt default motion state and passing in that transform that we declared up here and pass this position and rotation into. Okay, now we just need to create our collision geometry. So let structure collision shape is equal to new ammo.bt box shape. And then this is going to be a three dimension vector. So it'll be a cube shape and then we're going to apply a margin so this will be the collision margin of that shape and it should be a low number then we're going to give it initial inertia okay then we're going to build the rigid body using all this information here so let rb info is equal to new new ammo bt rigid body construction info so we're passing in all the information here into this rigid body so mojs can build it so we're going to pass in the mass we're going to pass in the default motion state that we made here with the rotation and the position. We're going to pass in the collision shape that we made up here. And then we're going to pass in the inertia, the inertia that we declared up here. So we just need to use this information to make a rigid body. So let our body is equal to new ammo.rt rigid body. And I'm passing in the info that we just made here. And then we're adding this our body to the physics world. So physics world dot add rigid body, our body. And our body is in the rigid world. So we're going to add the name of this to the 3JS object. So the 3JS object is called new cube. Remember we called it new cube here when we made our mesh. 
So a new cube dot user data and user data you can create labels and add values to these labels. So the label will be physics body. The the value of that label will be our body because that's what we named it in this physics world. So it's going to kind of connect the name of one object with the other. And then we're going to add this to the rigid body list. So rigid body list, remember rigid body list is the list of all the rigid bodies that we're adding to the world. So rigid body list, we're pushing this object into that array and we're good to go. We have finally created that cube. There's a lot of work to creating an object because you have to create it in the 3GS world, the graphics setup, and then you have to create it in the AmoJS world. So let's see what we got to do next here. So now we have to create our grid of cubes. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm creating a two dimensional array of cubes and I'm spacing them just a little farther apart than their dimensions. They have a dimension of two. So I'm just skipping by 2.2 and 2.1 and creating a two dimensional array of cubes. This is their scale that I'm passing in to the create cube function. This is the position. I will be the X value. So whatever I value it is in this loop, it will be put in here. And whatever the J value is in this loop, that will be the Y position. And the Z position will always be 35. The mass will be one color will be this and the rotation or quaternion will be that. So I'm passing all of these into that create cube function, create a grid of cubes. Okay, now we have to create our drop cube. So here's our create drop cube function. So I'm going to call the create cube function and pass in the scale, the position, the mass, color, and the rotation or quaternion of that cube. And the create cube will make that cube. So there we go. So now our, all our cubes are made. So now we need to add event handlers to get the ray casting going. So here's our uh, add event handlers function. So I'm adding the mouse down event listener and I'm going to call the function on mouse down when the mouse button is clicked. And then we have our event listener for the resize window resize function. It's going to run on window resize when the window is resized. And then our render function. So before we look at the render function, we should look at how the ray casting will work. Because the ray casting is not in here. The ray casting is determined by this mouse down event handler, right? When the mouse button is clicked, then the ray casting will start. Here is our function on mouse down. And whenever the mouse button is pressed, an event will be logged. So the first thing to do is normalize the mouse coordinates from minus one to one. And the origin will be in the middle of the screen. Now I'm going to start the raycaster. So raycaster.set from camera. So I'm getting the coordinates from the mouse and from the camera because the ray starts from the camera and goes through the mouse coordinates. So I need to know those two things. From those coordinates, I'm going to get my ray vector for my raycaster. Now that we know our ray vector, we need to set the properties of the ball. So the position of the ball will be the ray vector for the X, Y, and Z, and the radius will be one, and the quaternion or the rotation will be this, and it will have a mass of one. And with these ball properties, we can start to make the ball. So for 3GS, we can build the ball mesh. So my geometry will be sphere buffer geometry and the radius will be the radius that we declared above and the material will be mesh tuned material with an emissive color of this and an emissive intensity of that and you can play around with these for whatever you want and the ball position will be the position properties we declared above and we're just adding the ball to the scene and then for AmoJS, we have to do the same thing we did do for the cubes we have to start to transform we have to set the identity we have to clear previous uh, transforms we have to set the origin the starting position of the ball that will be the position x y and z that we declared uh, up here and we have to set the rotation and the quaternion will be the ones we declared above quad x quad y quad z quad w and then we can pass the origin rotation from that transform into this motion state for that ball and then we declare the collision shape. The collision shape will be a sphere and we can use the same radius that we used to build the ball in 3JS. And we are gonna give that collision shape a margin of 0.05. And then we'll declare the initial inertia in this section using its mass and local inertia, which is this vector here. And now we're gonna build the rigid body from this information. So we're gonna pass in the mass, the motion state that we declared from our transform, the collision shape, that sphere shape here, 
with its margin and the local inertia that we uh, calculated here. And then we're going to use this information, this rigid body information, and make a new rigid body here using the rigid body method. So let body is equal to new ammo.bt rigid body. And the information we're passing in is this information here, RB info. And then we're going to add that body to the rigid body world. Right on. So let's give it an initial velocity. So to do that, we're going to set a linear velocity. So we need to know its position. So we're going to take that position we used from the raycaster vector and copy it. And then we're going to multiply it by 100. And this will give it its velocity. So if you want the ball to move faster, you can use a, a higher number. And if you want the ball to move slower, you can use a lower number. And then we're going to set that velocity of that rigid body. So body.set linear velocity. We're going to pass in a three-dimensional vector. And that's going to be this TMP pause, the pause x pause y and the pause z. And like the cubes, we're going to add some user data to that object. So ball.userdata.physics body, the value will be body. And then we're going to add the ball to the rigid body list. Remember the rigid body list keeps is an array of all the rigid bodies that we're adding to the world. And now we have our ray caster and ball set up. So now we just have to look at the render function. So here's our render function. We're just going to get the amount of time that has passed since the clock was last updated. So clock get delta. And then we're going to pass that into the update physics world function. And then we're rendering it and requesting the animation frame render so we can call this again and again and again. So let's look at update physics world here. So this will update all the transformations of the objects in the physics world. So we're going to use a step simulation. So now we're going to go through all the rigid bodies in the physics sim. So that's why we have the rigid body list. So we, we know all the rigid bodies that we added and we're going to update them. So we're going to update their position and rotation, their motion state. And we're going to update them based on their user data physics body. What name did we give to them? So let motion state is equal to physics object get motion state. So I'm getting the current position and rotation of that object. And if there is one, then I'm going to run this function here. So motion state get world transform. So how much did that object change in the world? So what is the amount of transformation? And I'm going to store the position transformation in new pause, right? Temp transformation, which is what I stored it in here. Get origin, like where is it located now? And what is the new rotation? So temp transformation dot get rotation. I'm going to store that in new qua. So I have the new position and I have the new rotation. So now I have to update that for these rigid bodies. So position dot set. I'm taking this object graphics uh, object because that's where it's going to draw it on the screen. So I'm setting that position to the new pause x value and the news pause y value and the new pause z value. I'm updating the position. I'm updating the x position, y position, z position of this object. And then I'm going to update the quaternion or rotation. I'm going to update the quaternion x, the quaternion y, the quaternion z, and the quaternion w so that the rotation will be transformed. So we've updated the amount of transformation for position and rotation for each object in this rigid body list. And that's it.